Welcome back. We're now on lesson four of our packet, reading measurements. Taking accurate measurements from lab equipment is a necessary skill in chemistry. We know that rulers are used to measure length, graduated cylinders measure volume, and thermometers measure temperature. Significant figures are the digits in a measurement that correspond to the markings on an instrument plus one estimated digit. So let's go into that. The markings on this thermometer can only tell us if the temperature is 28 or 29 degrees, right? Each of these is one degree. Now, if I wrote down 28 degrees or if I wrote down 29 degrees, I wouldn't feel good with that answer because it doesn't look like it's either 28 or 29. Rather, it looks sort of halfway in between. So that's the digit that we estimate. I don't know exactly whether it's 0.5 or 0.6 or maybe even 0.4, but I always estimate one more digit. So we don't say that this measurement is 28. We don't say it's 29. We say it's 28.5. We always read the markings on the instrument plus one estimated digit. We say that this thermometer gives us three significant digits. Let's look at this ruler. So one of the things to, to learn is what how to figure out what each of these markings represents. The ruler was a little bit easier than this. And one of the things that's deceiving, oftentimes on metric rulers, they'll say millimeters, but the millimeters correspond to these tiny lines, okay? So I'm actually gonna cross that out and write centimeters because the numbers represent centimeters, okay? Let's just do centimeters. To know what each line represents, well, I know the one, the one through 12 represents centimeters, but what about in between? To know what each line of a measuring tool represents, you take the difference between the two adjacent numbers, the ones that are written like zero and one, right? So I'm gonna take the difference between these two adjacent numbers. And then I'm going to count the number of lines in between. I'm going to actually divide by that number. So each line of this ruler would be, well, one minus zero is one, right? Divided by the number of lines in between. And that would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So it's one minus zero divided by 10, which is one over 10. So I know that each line represents 0 0.1 centimeters. It's actually a millimeter, which is why they have millimeters written here, but it's really confusing because you might think that it's 0.1 millimeters. It's not, it's 0.1 centimeters, okay? So we know that each line represents 0.1 centimeters. So when we go to rule, excuse me, when we go to read a ruler, we have to know what this ruler measures that it actually has lines from point up to the tenths place to 0.1. So I know that this pencil is about 7.5 centimeters, right? But what if the eraser landed between 7.4, halfway between 7.4 and 7.5? I wouldn't feel comfortable calling it either 7.4 or 7.5. I'd probably call it 7.45. So that's the estimated digit. So again, we always estimate one digit past what the lines represent. So since this is exactly on the line, or at least I see it as exactly on the line, I still have to I still have to take a measurement with that one estimated digit. So I wouldn't record 7.5 centimeters. I would record 7.50 centimeters because it has one additional estimated digit. So you always take what each line represents and add one placeholder to the right. Now it could be 7.51. Because that last digit is estimated, it's really in the eye of the beholder as long as it's a reasonable estimate. So we say that this ruler, which gave us this measure of 7.50 centimeters, gives us three significant digits. Practice problem 4-2. Okay, actually, why don't you try this? Figure out the measurement of this to the right number of sig figs, and then we'll go over it together. So pause the video now and figure out the length of this paperclip. Welcome back. If you're back, it means you've paused this video and you have measured this paperclip. 
we've already looked at this ruler. We know that this ruler, the lines represent 0 0.1 centimeters. So I know that this is greater than 1.5 centimeters, maybe 1.6, 1.7, I'd say exactly 1.8 centimeters. But because it might fall on the lot, it fall in between 1.8 and 1.9, I always add one estimated digit. So I would say that this is 1.80 centimeters. You see, yet again, the same ruler is giving us an answer in three significant figures or three significant digits. Let's move on to measuring volume. We use graduate cylinders to measure volume. Uh, we have other ways to measure volume, but this is one of our most tried and true ways. You never measure volume with a beaker. Um, we basically measure volume the same way you measure length with one exception. There is something at the bottom of this curve called a meniscus. The curve at the top of the liquid column, the, the level of water is curved downward because of the surface tension in the water and its adhesion to the sides of the cylinder. This, this curve is called the meniscus. When reading liquid volume, always read from the bottom, not the top of the meniscus, the bottom of the meniscus. I don't even know if I could actually draw a line where that would be. Let me see if I can. That is not a good one. Let's try, let's try this again. That's not good either. Maybe I can move it. No, you get the point. It's from the bottom. Oh, look at there. I can move it up a little, maybe. No, I'm not doing a good job. There we go. It's at the bottom of the meniscus. We're reading that line, and you always want to read that at eye level. It will look different at different when you're at an angle. So you always want to read it at eye level. Okay. Other than that methodology of reading a graduated cylinder, the determination of significant digits and taking measurements is the same. Okay. So let's say I actually was pretty accurate where I landed the bottom of that meniscus. I first have to know what each line represents. Well, I know it's milliliters. And every number here is milliliters, 10, 20. I know this actually is milliliters and not centiliters. That's why the, to me, the ruler is so confusing sometimes. This is milliliters, it's in tens of milliliters, but what do the individual lines represent? Remember, we take the difference between two numbers, let's say 20 and 10. I wanna go back to the thicker line here, 20 and 10, and we divide by the number of Lines in between, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So 20 minus 10 is 10 divided by 10. So each line represents a digit in the ones place, right? So if I'm looking at this measurement, I it's, it's above 85, it's below 90. I would say it's about 88, right? It's to the ones place. But again, the where I drew the meniscus here, it looks actually not at 88 and it's definitely not at 89. So I'm going to estimate one more digit in between the two. And I'm going to say, I don't remember what I wrote in this packet, but we'll look at it in a second. I'm going to say 88.2 milliliters. Here, without the meniscus, uh, without my line of the meniscus, I had estimated 88.0 milliliters. But it, what that's telling you is that you are measuring this one estimated digit past what the lines represent, and that estimated digit just has to be reasonable. It will differ with the eye of the beholder. So this graduated cylinder, just like the ruler, reads our measurements in three significant digits. That's the end of this lesson. I've uploaded a worksheet you can work through to get more practice with measurements, and I'll see you in the next lesson.